Well, we've done a lot of work on, um, on our, our world map, right? Like we really had to define what the, how the world map works for the first time with Diablo 4, um, you know, because it is a, an open world with all of these activities you can get to. It needs to um, effectively show you all of the cool things you can do without turning into a task list of like, well, I guess I gotta do this. There are 30 flags, I guess I gotta do all 30 of these flags here. You know, so really finding that balance and also making sure that we're communicating uh, important things about the world, like, well, there's a mountain range that runs between these two areas. It's really important that the player knows that so they're not like running along the coast, like, how do I get down here, you know? And that needs to come through on the map. So we've done a lot of um, iteration on, uh, on how the map can, can show all the exciting things that you can do, um, making sure that the map isn't just turning into a, a checklist, and also um, the visual design of the map in terms of like showing, being consistent with the overall art design of the world and having that kind of uh, aspect of like an old map that it feels like a, a part of the world's fantasy um, but still is accurate and useful <laughs> the way that <laughs> right. you would expect maps to be in right. the modern day. Right. It even has a GPS system. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess that's the next level. Huh? <sighs> the next level of the game. We're in a game? Oh. Yes, Grandpa Eddie, we are in a game. You can't be serious. The big thing I think is worth clarifying is around the story is that, you know, one of the concerns about sort of going big, putting open world in a big neon sign and flashing that sign is that people have that notion of the Breath of the Wild kind of, um, oh, I, I'm, it's completely organic and I can go anywhere and do anything and eventually I can figure it out for my, like that's not really our story, right? Our story allows for non-linearity, but there is a story. We wanted to have a beginning, middle and end. We wanted to start at a certain place, we want it to end at a certain place. And so it's more of a branching story and you can choose kind of what order you want to play the branches. And so there's a pretty quick early decision on once you get past the prologue of, I can actually want to go start act three first and I want to play all the act three story before then I go play act one and then I go and go play act two. And so if I replay the story, I can go and do now act two first versus act three versus act one. So there's, there's, there's sort of branches and come back, branches and come back versus this like just it's all over the place and you can kind of and so that's I think it's worth clarifying that that's kind of when we talk about sort of your the freedom of choice around the story it's really those sorts of things you can actually not pursue the story for a while and that's the nice thing about the open world is like there's a lot of side quests there's a lot of things in the world that you can go and do that aren't on the campaign sort of golden path and the fact is just that the, the golden path is a branching path that you can decide when uh, you want to do those branches and in what order The thing that we really clued in on was like this notion, we sort of, when we were trying to figure out how best to talk about it, it was, it was like every inch is built for combat was kind of a phrase that came to mind, which is like, that was really how it was designed. We didn't design an open world where it was like, oh, we expect a lot of travel here and we need you to do it's a lot of downtime here, go play poker over here and go fishing over here. Like, there, it was really about, we wanted to have that, basically anywhere in the open world, you could stop a monster could attack you and you could fight there, right? And so having, when you're, when you're working at a density that, that allows for that, that's a different type of open world, that, that, that at any moment in any place you could have a fight. Uh, and so that kind of changed how we thought about the design and how you move between the zones and how all that stuff plays out. So that's really, a sort of, it's kind of calibrated for action in terms of the open world. Yeah, in fact, at one point it was too dense. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so we, we dialed it back a little bit. You know, we wanted, we didn't want um, to have an experience where you were sort of riding through miles of, of empty terrain to get to cool, cool stuff. We wanted to have all of the world have exciting and interesting things to do. So if you go into, uh, if you decide to do Act Three first, you know, maybe you're playing uh, through the campaign a second time, and this time you want to, to do Act Three the first. You're going to have different experiences. It's going to be a little bit more challenging. Um, and you're going to have you're going to be playing through in a different different area of the world and seeing strongholds, you're seeing all of the the open world um, features there. And as you're going through it, there's lots of stuff to do, whether you're mounted or you're you're riding uh, or you're you're navigating through on foot. 
but when we had, we actually had so much stuff that getting through it on a mount um, was challenging. And so we had to say like, okay, let's make sure that the roads actually are, are connect to good places and are a good way to travel through this area so that um, you can get through, get, get to places that you're going expediently um, and, uh, and also have the opportunity to go off the path and see interesting things. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that really like with the renowned system, that ability to sort of like plays into each zone where you can go and there's, you're going exploring, looking for hidden caches and you're going and completing certain side quests, you're looking for certain strongholds to sort of sort of say, okay, this zone's done and I get benefits of that of, okay, I'm going to get skill points that I can actually, on my, on my alt, I can get, I automatically start with six skill points. And so I've sort of accelerated my alt progression. But I think that's part of the open world we wanted was, again, as we think about choice, whether it be choice of class and choice of how you look and choice of your skills and choice of your paragon, like that ability to, whether you turn left, turn right, turn around, that's all up to you. And so you can kind of go and explore the world and go after those, what's most, do I want to go and do dungeons? Am I going to do world events? Am I going to go do local events? Am I taking on a world boss? Am I, you know, and so that, that sort of notion of having f that the, freedom of choice, but still having that sort of directionality is really, um, I think is really important. And that's something I, when uh, working on Gears 5, we added a sort of bowls, like large bowls that were pseudo open world in Gears 5. And we met with a bunch of open world designers, people who worked on Red Dead, people who worked on Tomb Raider. And they always said like, that's, it's a little bit of an illusion is that, that people want to have, they say they want open world and free choice, but they also want to be told where to go. You know, and so that was when they talked about in Tomb Raider is that when you, there's like a road and the road would end, but if you went straight, you would go to where they want you to, but the world is open to you. But you knew if you went straight, um, that that would be the path. And so that's kind of, in some ways, our story is that guidepost. Like, you know where the campaign wants you to go and where the campaign, you always have a place to come home. Like you always know, oh, if I go off going crazy for a while and I go and do strongholds and events and open world exploration and da da da, at the end of the day, you go like, okay, I've been doing this for a while. What am I? Okay, quests. Okay, that's where I have to go in the campaign, and I can get back on the rail and, and, and know where, to get back on the storyline and go back to doing that. And so, to me, it's a great mixture of that notion of like playing through a story, but also having the ability to go wherever you want, whenever you want. Заходи, если что.